this is one of our better glitches. I'm kind of thinking it's this a, is a great jump off point to be successful in so many different levels. It's no big deal. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, fine. it's gonna be fine. It's fine. Or I I was just like, well, I don't need to deal with that. Like I just avoided it. And what that did was create more conflict. Or I wasn't looking at reality like this isn't happening or this isn't really that bad. When we do that, when we avoid conflict, what we create and what we manufacture is fake peace. Nobody wants fake peace. Blown my mind all day here. <laughs> Welcome to Biz Glitch 165. It's June 13th, 2024. This is a year long project of, we call them glitches, but they're mistakes, they're errors that you have made. You know you've made them. Look in the mirror, <laughs> admit it, own it. Come and on, we've made them, it. which is why this project exists. But today's <laughs> video is about you owning an important element hmm. that affects literally every aspect of your business, whether it is conversations with your business partners or communications with your employees slash team members, associates, staff, associates, colleagues, vendors, everybody, customers, prospective customers, everybody. networking, everybody. Oh my gosh. Communication, strategic communication. But what does that mean exactly? Which I don't is, know. I just I set know. it up. It beat it up for you to kick the shot. I was the shot. waiting. But I don't get really? a lot in these videos, and when I get it, I'm going to be strategic about communicating it, okay? This is another one of my favorite topics, and it is about business owners who avoid conflict, who try to avoid conflict, because can you really avoid conflict? Really what we're doing is avoiding confrontation of a, an adverse situation. I had a delightful conversation with a woman named Jen Whitmer, who specializes in helping teams better communicate because of the confrontational nature where she says confrontation is kind. There's so many components of why we want to avoid confrontation. Some people are like, well, I'm not the one avoiding confrontation. I'm happy to do that. That is a minority of people. So the majority of us avoid confrontation and it can come from a, a variety of motivations. And some of it is why can't we all just be happy? Yeah. I just want everybody to like me. I've been taught that confronting people is rude and I don't want to be rude. I've been taught if I confront somebody, I might be wrong and I don't want to be wrong. It feels like a failure. Mm -hmm. If like, why didn't it work the first time? And some people are just deeply afraid of like fear of conflict or disconnection is their core root fear. So all of those reasons are why we might avoid what I like to call a kind confrontation. So the word confront actually means together to your face. So if we think about, oh, I'm just coming face to face with somebody and we're doing this together, that can shift your mindset about what a confrontation is. Her specialty is about having more kind confrontations instead of conflict and creating difficult conversations out of conflict. It may not be perfect, whatever, whoever is involved and the thing that's happening, but you can bring the human element to it with a level of kindness. So From I'm, your description, it sounds like she begins that process with a level of acceptance. Yeah. Acceptance that confrontation is a real thing yes. and avoiding it is, you know, it, it, you have to accept that it will happen and right. you can't avoid it. But how you manage your entry into confrontation. Am I right? Does it because that's kind of sounds like what the setup is? Well, I'm glad that you asked because we are going to be inserting clips from the interview. When I'm working with a team or when I'm doing a keynote around leadership and self awareness, I was like, you know, so the research, <laughs> it's not just, you know, Jen Whitmer's personal experience, but several organizational health researchers and psychologists all come back to self-awareness is that key piece. So self-awareness is the basic underlying number one skill that you need. And the research continues to show that self-aware leaders are the ones who run more engaged teams. Their teams are more productive. Self-aware employees and team members are the ones who get more raises and promotions. Self-aware leaders run more profitable companies. So these are all the outcomes that we want, right? And so that's why I start with that self-awareness piece and understanding who am I and what's motivating me. Then I start to understand how I can interact with other people. Now, again, how many times have we said, unless you're a sociopath, <laughs> but 
for the most part, if there is an error or a mistake, it was probably most of the time an accident. So we don't have to make this a full on situation where you're not accepting that it was an accident. It was a mistake that was an accident. And instead, bring a level of kindness to the situation and not a level of fury to the person that you're having to confront. What about some of the tools that people could rely on without it feeling overwhelmed? Like, oh, I got to learn something new. So I'm going to give some really big ideas. They have very practical applications, but these are going to work in all places. 